Yo, what's poppin' everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Zach Lesage here. Today we're gonna be going over the top 10 best temporal forces decklists. You've heard that right. We have the new set top 10 best decks already. Post rotation and everything. Um, I went over some Japanese City League results. I compiled deck lists, put some de together some awesome deck lists, and I really hope that everyone enjoys this video. We're going to start off the rankings, put your best guesses for your whatever decks you think are going to be in the top 10. Let us know how you feel about this video in the comments. Would totally love some input. That being said, let's jump into our number 10 pick. Still blocking its way in 2024 is Block Snorlax Control. Um, now, it hasn't really changed too much. We lose Kerbominable, we replace it with Chi Yu. Um, we don't have Echoing Horn anymore, so we get the Mantine from Astral Radiance. The biggest thing that we get from this deck overall is going to be Eerie, the supporter um, at the far right, that allows us to rip some cards out of our opponent's hand of our choice. Those might be cards that allow them to get around our Snorlax block, and that might make this deck pretty good. Um, hasn't necessarily been performing to the absolute top tier like some other decks in Japan, but Block Snorlax has still been seeing a lot of success, and I think this is the type of deck that people always underestimate until it wins. Um, we also gain Hero Cape, Hero Cape giving us some extra HP in the mix as well. Um, I, I think that this deck is going to be a force in our metagame. Still refining, still figuring out the best list. Does a card like Hand Trimmer go in here? Is the list need something like Chi Yu? Time will tell, and we'll see as we get some more results from Champions League, uh, Japanese regionals, anything else like that. But right now, this is what we got going on for Snorlax. Lists are available in the pinned comments, so you can copy and paste them. Um, and you can copy and paste it right into the Limitless Tabletop Simulator. Um, if you have any questions about that, ask me about it in the comments, but you could basically plug a deck in there, play either solitaire mode or screen share on some device or on some app like Discord and play with your friends early. Um, even if you just want to have a list that's typed out, <clears throat> you could also put that into the limitless proxy printer or you could put it, um, I mean, whatever you need a list for, it's all good. Uh, but yeah, I think that's fantastic. Snorlax is great. And uh, if you need any of these cards, check out our sponsors at Kayfabe, Atlas, PTCGL Store um, for all your Pokemon needs. Honestly, surprising me at the number nine spot is Gardevoir. I thought this deck died when we got uh, rid of Chilling Rain, or when we will get rid of Chilling Rain, uh, because we lose the Gardevoir that has Shining Arcana. Um, in this case, we've replaced it with uh, Screamtail and Drifloon and Mimikyu and Weirdeer, because we also lost Zacian V as well. Um, Losing Battle VIP Pass has not been that big of a deal for a deck like this because we can gain uh, Buddy Poffin or Friendship Poffin, however it's going to get uh, called in English. And of course, we also gain Hero Cape here as well. So we can load up a bunch of energies onto these little Pokemon like Screamtail and Drifloon and hit for a lot of damage as a single prize card Pokemon. So the core of the deck is still there. We'll have to see how it plays out. But right now, it seems like the list looks quite good. Um, and it's been seeing some light success, like slightly better. Like all of these decks I have ranked, the rankings available in our Discord server, uh, both my own and the Shuffle Squads. So check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash tsswin or patreon.com slash ptcg. Both have access to decklist rules, so you can get access to all of our decklists or anything else like that. Um, there's more than just these top 10 decks. Uh, there's about 20 archetypes that I've compiled in both servers. Um, either way, Gardevoir seems like it has a little bit of fluffed into it. We'll see how much this lasts, but like we have Psychic Acceleration, the same way that I could see Electric Generator being good for its entire playability. We just need the right Pokemon to power up, and we have a few options right now. Lost Zoning its way all the way to the number 8 spot is Lost Zone Toolbox. Now, this particular build of the deck, we've lost things like Dragonite V, and all we've done is gone for a hybrid of the Paradox, um, the Paradox version of this deck and the regular Turbo version of this deck. So, going more with Iron Hands and Roaring Moon, we're losing most V Pokemon. Raikou gives us an out to play for Steel Stone. We still have access to Town Store to search out some of these cards, but now we have access to Emergency Board, Forest Seal Stone, and we can search those out whenever we need to. 
Um, the deck doesn't really gain too much, but it also doesn't lose much. We're still able to Oko things. We're still able to draw extra prize cards. We gain Prime Catcher, um, the A spec that allows us to bring up whatever we want. That's great off of, you could use Chorus and that in the same turn. Uh, so I think Lost Zone Box decks are still alive and well. Uh, still figuring out exactly the best way to play these because we get, there's a lot of powerful Pokemon in this set. I'm even thinking things like Gouging Fire. Is Gouging Fire a better typing than being Dark type? Um, it all depends on how the metagame shapes up, but right now this is a really solid take on Lost Zone Toolbox, and we'll have to see how it plays out for the rest of the formats. A lot of people are cutting Jirachi as well from their deck, so Sableye is quite good right now. Um, if you haven't already, give this video a like. Uh, share it with your friends, uh, re repost it on social medias if you see me post it, and uh, subscribe to the channel. Double check, because uh, it's we've looked at the numbers, and about 50% of you have not subscribed, so check that out. Um, but yeah, we'll see what's going on at our number 7 spot. Making it rain at number 7 is Goldango with Origin Form Palkia V-Star. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of a theme here so far. Nothing absolutely brand new so far. I think people have gone from uh, the top decks from last format have changed them a little bit. So in this case, instead of using Battle VIP Pass, we're going to be using Buddy Poffin. Um, and we've lost a couple supporters along the way. Like, we don't need Worker. We didn't really lose it, but there's no more Path. So that's something that we don't need to work about, worry about. We have um, Cryptomaniac or Codebreaker's Solution. Um, at the top that allows us to put whatever we want on top of the deck and then we can draw those with make it rain so there's a nice synergy there uh, we also have morty's confidence uh right beside it so we could discard a card allowing us to get some extra cards in our discard pile maybe for origin form palkia and uh, we can draw a card for each of our opponent's bench pokemon the only other new card we have is prime catcher when it comes to this list and that allows us to rip into our opponent quite easily i think that something like this could be quite strong i've also seen some lists that are playing the new dedun sparse that are able to draw some more cards um and they're really cutting the palkia and radiant greninja line for that which i don't really like so that's why i went for this version of the list only time will tell we'll have to figure out how everything else plays out but right now i think that this is a solid take on the goldango archetype it just came second at Dortmund regionals as well so i think goldango has been a little underrated for too long and it could see a lot more success going forward star birth on its way at number six is arc v star with Giratina v star now this is a deck that kind of fell off this past format and it seems like it's gained a lot um mostly in the forms of just like having iron leafs ex um iron leaves ex giving you a grass type attacker as a basic you could rush in grab those energies off your opponent off your pokemon in play and maybe knock out a charizard ex due to weakness or a roaring moon ex due to weakness this list seems really well built out and i think that's one of the good things about arc arc decks are well discovered and we know what's going on um we've added in a copy of uh eerie eerie allowing us to rip some cards out of our opponent's hand so maybe we hit them with a judge they're recovering from it we got the barrel we're still drawing cards next turn we just rip a couple cards out of their hand as they're building a comeback uh, we have maximum belt as our a spec here allowing us to hit 330 on charizard so knocking out um pokemon is really important and we can knock out whatever we want with anything here uh, so absolutely fantastic across the board. We also have Mist Energy at the end. So we can no longer get o code by something like Roaring Moon EX using Frenzy Gouging, or even a Star Requiem if we run into a Lost Zone Tina. Um, the build looks great. I think it's one of those things where across the board it looks solid. I, I wouldn't really change too much when it comes to this list. Arc decks are pretty well discovered, and this is a great way to start like with like a 98% like list nothing's really getting changed from this point as its first time on our list ever and at number five is ancient toolbox now th there's a lot of new cards here so i stress that you check out the translations available at justin basil or wherever you get your translations the goal of this deck is to either attack with karaidon for 30 times the amount of ancient pokemon you have in play if you have six you're swinging for 180 um and we could quite often just like two shot our opponent's pokemon or it's enough to knock out a cram or another single prize card pokemon um roaring moon does 70 plus 10 for each um ancient card you have in your discard pile so if we don't need flutter main we're pitching those all with ultra ball earthen vessel explorer's guidance whatever we need and we can build up to some massive numbers um even if we think of it and we have two roaring moon left 
and they're both powered up in play we can discard four eight um 16 21 um even like 20 like we can knock out ex pokemon with roaring moon and we're also a single prize card deck we have that like hp buff that usually gets us past the uh iron hands just ripping us to shreds we have ways to self-accelerate with professor Sadas. we have ways to uh search through our deck for whatever we're looking for and discard with explorer's guidance we have awakening drum that allows us to draw cards for each of our ancient pokemon in play and ancient booster energy capsule gives us a lot more hp i think a deck like this is quite cool um a deck like this is also misunderstood in a lot of ways i think that this build this build looks solid and um i mean i've been building decks for 20 over 20 years now um it, it's one of those things where i think there's always room to improve decks like this and really adapt to the metagame um, but this is a solid build to start things off and we'll have to see how the rest of the metagame shapes out to see what other ancient pokemon we might want to toss in here but this this build's been looking sick and it's been performing very well in japan so far um and maybe a deck like this you give it a couple more weeks and it's going to break the top three uh maybe even taking that number one spot we'll have to find out but this is probably the best like temporal forces based deck so far in our format similar to our current rankings charizard is at number four in our paldean fates and it's number four in our temporal forces metagame now this is a build based off of the very popularized builds of charizard ex with pidgeot that we have seen in north america where azul is one san antonio caleb rogerson is what uh came second at the charlotte regional championships um these builds basically take that and you can see we've added in the charmeleon from paldean fades everything else is very similar for pokemon charmander line um might get mixed up a little bit depending on how things go with stabilize or not but right now the pokemon line looks eerily similar um we've added the same supporter line same ultra balls we've replaced battle vip pass with buddy poffin like most other decks it's pretty much a one for one because a lot of pokemon as basics are under 70 however we also need to play nest ball because we've lost level ball and that allows us to search out rotom and other pokemon um the only other big change that we have in this deck is adding in a maximum belt so like when we're playing against other charizards we can get to knock it a little bit quicker and of course we have access to a mist energy so we can no longer get ohko'd charizard seems like it's just gotten strictly better and has not really lost anything so when it comes to these early lists the reason why a deck like this is fantastic to choose it might not necessarily be as new and shiny as iron crown uh future box or anything like that it's tried tested and true so if i were playing in an early temporal forces tournament this is probably where i'd be looking at um to start practicing the metagame because you have something familiar that gets your feet wet while also having a very well refined deck list because of the amount of work that other players have put in in past formats so that's really where this deck is seeing its success but we'll have to see where charizard stays in our format it's just a very powerful pokemon and really well equipped for almost anything flying high above most of the rest of the competition is lugia v star now this deck has come back to the metagame and it's really one of those things where lugia v star was not the greatest pick before but now we gain the new chinchino Cinchino. let me know how it's pronounced in the comments below that does 70 times the amount for each special energy card attached to our uh to our Minchino, our Chinchino there. I, they're all the same Pokemon to me. Um, that being said, the rest of the core looks very similar to a colorless Lugia build. We've lost Professor Burnett as far as I could tell. I'm pretty sure it's E block on, not F block on. Um, so we've replaced it with a Jacques that we could use with Ultra Ball. We took a lot of um, inspiration from Alec Geisler's list from this past Knoxville Regional Championships. We get to use Master Ball uh, because searching Pokemon is so important when it comes to this deck. And we have a bunch of energies, notably the newest one being Mist Energy. So we can't get OHKO'd by something like Roaring Moon. Um, being able to hit for a stable 220 is great against powerful Pokemon like Maridon, Chen Pao um etc um we have opportunities to swing as a single prize card pokemon like with snorlax mui x can copy our uh any of the gyratina or any of the powerful pokemon that are in our format and as a single prize card pokemon uh chinchino can really put on the pressure to our opponent to just knock out whatever we want by loading up a bunch of energies on it this deck has been performing unreasonably well in japan to the point where i'm like is lugia that great 
Apparently in Japan, this is one of the absolute best decks. Uh, ranked number three on the actual rankings, not just a personal pick or nothing like that. So be sure to check it out and test the deck a little bit. Lugia's back. You might want to pull them out from the back of uh, your shoebox binder or your online collection. Let's see what we got going on at our number two spot up next. Raining down all those energies from Baxcalibur all the way to number two is Chen Pao EX. Now, Chen Pao EX just won Dortmund Regionals. Shout out to Frank Pao from Babytown. If you've seen on Twitter or X or on the Pokemon streams, if you know, you know. Um, get those Frank Pals in the comments, you know? And uh, th this deck, it doesn't really lose anything like other lists. Um, we, the battle vip pass in this list is uh it's supposed to be buddy poffin i forgot to update it on limitless uh but we're just going to be searching out our basic pokemon like that we have all our nest balls we have all of our uh superior energy retrievals everything is pretty much the same we've gained code breakers solution or uh cryptomaniacs deciphering whichever way it gets translated to put cards on top getting them with the barrel we have access to um prime catcher now that we can search off of irida there, there's a lot of cool things that we could do with this deck and it looks really well defined i think that's one of those things about the decks that we've previously seen success with they seem really well defined in this upcoming format even to the point where we have the new frigibax from Haldane and fade so we've taken inspiration from all different things so again disregard that the battle vip pass in the deck it's not supposed to be battle vip pass it's supposed to be buddy poffin that's me doing a slight oversight when it comes to uh editing these deck lists um and just like changing it on the limitless image gen file um to whatever the japanese equivalent name is other than that everything else is accurate with this list so be sure to check that out and i'll make sure to update it in the discord servers once i get a chance later on today what's going to be our number one deck put your best comments and guesses um in the comment section below would love to get some inspiration see exactly what everyone's thinking of um i think it's going to be surprising a surprising one at our number one let's see what it is even surprising me we have charizard ex with the barrel as our number one deck and i was like why would we go from zard pidgeot the best deck we've forgotten about the barrel and here we are now and i think in a world where our opponent can now play prime catcher at any cost and bring up whatever they want or slap on a maximum belt and play boss's orders they could bring up a pidgeot ex and knock it out really easily so do you want to have the liability of being a two prize card pokemon and searching for whatever you want and have to use rare candy or do you want to play the barrel that your opponent's probably not going to bring up we didn't have to worry about pass so that's why i originally thought pidgeot was going to be the best portion of this deck um but the barrel seems like it's going to be a little bit more low maintenance and we are vibing we have some extra space and that allows us to put things out there like buddy poffin um searching for whatever we want those bidoofs those charmanders whatever um we have access to a full supporter line that we're able to just kind of uh we got extra room for the professor toro scenario and stuff like that um we play maximum bell here for the same reason that the other charizard list runs it we're able to hit numbers that we weren't able to previously hit and i think that this build is just really simple it looks again really well fleshed out um could we add something like a rotom in this deck i'm not sure if we need the rotom um maybe we do maybe we don't we'll have to see how the metagame works out but for right now this is what we got going on for our charizard ex deck um again i do have copy and pasteable lists so you can play them at limitless tabletop or when they come out on ptcg live um in the comments below it's the pinned comment so check that out um, otherwise, uh, I really hope that you've enjoyed watching the video up until this point. Let me close things out for you. And that's what we got going on for this video today. Charizard is still on top of the metagame, but things might change. We see Ancient Box absolutely dominating in Japan, and it might be like enough to beat Charizard out of that top spot eventually. We'll have to see his list become more and more refined, but stay tuned for a lot of great stuff from the Shuffle Squad. We have more than just these top 10 lists available on our Patreon. Um, I think I have about 20 archetypes all together. So if you want to check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash tsswin, uh, you get access to our articles, deck lists, chatting with the squad. Totally valuable, totally valuable. Um, if you haven't already, give this video a like, share with your friends, subscribe if you haven't. Uh, absolutely would be fantastic. We're so close to 20k subs. We'd really appreciate everything. That being said, if there's anything else, let me know if you need any help on Metify to get some Pokemon coaching. Uh, my link is available in the description. I'll catch up with all y'all later. Peace out and have a great one.
Want to support the Shuffle Squad? Be sure to check out all of our sponsors in the description to pick up Pokemon TCG singles, sealed, and PTCG live codes. Hey trainers, tired of having too many cards lying around? I know that feeling, and I know what a hassle it is to try and sell those cards. But selling bulk is now easier than ever with TCG Bulk. Find tons of potential buyers in a single place. You just download the app, look for the best buyer near you, and carefully pack your bulk, ship it, and you get paid. It really is that simple. Turn the cards you don't want into the cards you absolutely need for your next deck. You made it to the end. Thank you so much for watching this entire video from the Shuffle Squad. Honestly, from the bottom of our hearts, we appreciate each and every person that supports our content watches what we have going on every single day every single week even from time to time and uh, continuously allows us to have a forum to project our creative content towards the pokemon tcg community so if you haven't already be sure to give this video a like subscribe to the channel and even leave a comment to help boost the youtube algorithm that being said we'll catch you with our next video thanks again take it easy